Okay. All right. So welcome everybody to the Huntington Board of Education meeting of June 22nd, 2020. I need a motion to go into our public session. Motion from Tom. Thank you. And a second. Linda. Send a second from Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is everybody, Aye. anybody opposed? I didn't think so. All right. Thank you very much. Um, please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of, here. I know Tom said he kind of follows my mouth. Here we go. Ready? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> so that is going to bring us to our approvals. Tonight we have the Board of Education meeting minutes and transcription of June 8th, 2020. So I need a motion to approve the Board of Education meeting minutes transcription of June 8th, 2020. Can I get a motion? No. Bill, no. thank you. And a second? Second X. Common Xavier. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. We have also the Board of Education meeting minutes of June 16th, 2020. Can I get a motion to approve the Board of Education meeting minutes of June 16th, 2020? Michelle. Michelle and a second from Linda, I see. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Just so you know, Jen, the entire recording of the two days of ballot canvass canvassing is available in the Board Docs library, should anybody wish to review it from end to end. That's All right, that's, <laughs> it was exciting. That's a I mean, like I said before, it was edge of your seat stuff, but <laughs> I don't know. That's a lot of hours of counting. Thank you to Joanne and her team, and I'm sure yeah. we'll thank her later, but wow, Joanne, what a job. Monumental. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to, we have an FYI of our budget transfers, and then we have warrants. So I need a motion to approve the warrants that were certified 6-17-2020. Can I get a motion? Linda. Okay. Linda, and a second from Christine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. All right, that moves us swiftly to board member communications and announcements. I'm going to open it up to my fellow trustees. I'll go first. I want to thank the community for the support of the budget and the support of my reelection. Um, it meant a lot to me to get their support and being able to return for another three years. Uh, but special thanks to those teachers that reached out. Dozens and dozens of teachers that, that reached out to support me, gave me some insight, uh, either by text, email, or, or by cell phone. Um, I want you to know that the lines of communication remain open. I want you to reach out to me. I know that I'm only one of seven, but I want to hear from you. I want to, I want to know um, what's happening in the school. It's going to be very important for me in the next three years. Um, special thanks to, to you for, for that support. To Mr. Graver. Uh, you've given me a new perspective. I want you to know that I am a partner. I'm a teacher's partner. I'm your partner. I want to learn from this. I want to be better at what I'm doing here. And I want you to look at me as a partner, and that's how we're going to work from here on. Thank you all. Thank you to um, Jim and your staff for the election process. It was seamless, uh, and I appreciate everything you did. Thank you. Anybody else want to say anything? All right, well, you know what, I'll just take the opportunity before I forget also to, to follow up on what Xavier said and just say thank you, first of all, to the community for, as always, being tremendously supportive of our school district. We are so fortunate in these trying times that you are still willing to come out and support us and support the students of the district, and it means the world to all of us. So thank you. Thank you to Jim and his team, and special shout out thanks again to Joanne, because they were well ahead of the curve when they even sensed that we might be having to, um, you know, switch all of our ballots over to mail-in ballots. They were well ahead getting the printer on it and making sure we were going to have enough and coming up with a very tight system of how to count them to make sure that it was being handled very, you know, properly and, and with professionalism. So thank you to everybody that was involved in that. Yeah, Jen, I'd like to echo exactly what you had to say, add Tom into that and thank him for his hand in helping and yes. uh, congratulate Xavier, look forward to working together, continuing to work together and congratulate Kelly. 
Yes, and congratulations to Kelly. She's going to be a tremendous asset to the sport. Yeah. I just know it. So thank you. And did anybody else want to say anything before we move on? All right, Jim, to you. All right, I have a collection of things here that I'll move through quickly. First of all, I think you've, you've said it as well as anyone, all of you. Um, thank you for supporting our school district in, in every way, shape, and form. This was a little bit of a nerve-wracking process. We, mm -hmm. we did not, um, you know, obviously know what, what, what was going to come of this. Most districts had no clue. All districts had no clue. But uh, thank you to the community of Huntington for believing in us as a school district and, and uh, understanding and knowing that, that we are here to take care of our children and our families. And that is a part of our mission that will never be compromised in any way, shape, or, or form. Um, there were some questions about the format of this meeting a couple of weeks ago because the, the governor had not yet extended the amendment to open meetings law to allow this to occur. Uh, right now, this amendment extends through July 6th, which happens to be the day before the July 7th reorganization meeting. So obviously, I will keep the board and community informed in terms of the format of the next meeting. Uh, in, in some respects, this is challenging. In other respects, we, we are a little spoiled because everything is very cleanly videoed and transcribed and um, it, it just the, the, the personal component has been missing. But uh, I will, like I said, I will make sure that everybody is as informed as it, as it gets uh, waiting for the governor's next uh, mandate on this. A couple of other updates. Uh, we talked about budgets, ballots, the APPR process. I may have mentioned this at the, at the last meeting. It has been waived for the 2019-20 school year. Uh, the extended year program, I believe, uh, Diana Rich, Ms. Rich sent out the communications to our uh, special education families today in terms of the hybrid format of that program. Uh, we are, we've, no detail missed. It's, it's something that we are really putting every ounce of thought and effort into running in the right way. And I hope our, our parents and families and our, particularly our students uh, reap the benefit of that. And uh, I certainly encourage them to contact uh, Diana or myself if there are any concerns. We are in the process of determining a date to bring back our non-essential workers and when I say non-essential that is a state designation. It does not by any means suggest that they are not essential to what we're doing here. Uh, many people have been working from home. We are going to transition them back over the next couple of weeks. Many have been here already and working uh, in office from, from top to bottom since the get-go but uh, there are others that are going to be coming back with us, uh, coming back to us very shortly. This is an exciting week for our class of 2020 members. Um, first of all, I don't know if anybody had a chance to see it yet, but I will say the Huntington High School Senior Award, uh, Senior Athletic Awards uh, virtual presentation was posted at about 4 p.m. today. And I need to say I did watch it from cover to cover. Uh, Mrs. McCarthy and, and company did a terrific job. If you haven't seen it, please take a look. Uh, it, it, it's not going to replace the on-site ceremony, but uh, I, I, I need to, just say that she did a terrific job under the circumstances and really uh, the, the, the heart was here and the, the love that, that she has for the athletic programs and the kids that are part of them was blatantly obvious throughout that presentation. So please take a look. It's posted to the website as well as on our Facebook page. We also uh, commendations to our art teachers and Mr. Reynolds for the virtual art shows that were presented at all grade levels. Again, that's something we're very excited to present at around uh, on the day and the day following the Board of Education election on site. Obviously, we couldn't do it that way this year, so the virtual process was the next best thing, and the kids never failed to disappoint. The kids have been artistically engaged from the get-go here, and, and uh, a lot of their work is themed around some of what they've experienced over the last couple of months, and, and it shows. The passion in the work and the way they express themselves, it does come through, and I just want to commend them from K through 12 for, for doing a, a terrific job. Also, uh, congratulations and thank you to Mr. Cusack and, and his crew for the Senior Academic Award Ceremony. Also, uh, an enjoyable watch. I hope the kids really enjoyed. Again, it doesn't replace being face-to-face -face and interacting with your peers for the last time during that, uh, during that last couple of month period. But uh, again, a, a, a fantastic job. Thank you to all the sponsors, presenters, et cetera, both athletic and, and academic. Uh, we, we, we couldn't do it without you and thank you for supporting our kids. On Friday, actually it's gonna be a little surprise for the high school staff on Wednesday. Uh, I've been speaking with the senior class president, Daniela Campos, and, and she has been very, very, um, I'm gonna say 
adamant about thanking the staff at the high school. So there is going to be a little drive through. Uh, the staff who are available are hopefully going to join us on Wednesday afternoon where the kids can actually thank them for what they've experienced, the kids have experienced over the past, over the past several years. So hopefully some, some staff, I, I know some staff will be there to join and, and to, uh, to be celebrated by our children. And that's, that's what it's all about. Okay, I know the um, summer reading, not that, that that's the first thing on people's minds right now, but please know that <laughs> principals are sharing those recommendations for the summer. So the kids are, are academically engaged as well as trying to clear their heads at the same time. Uh, and I also sent out on Friday the plan for meals over the summer. Uh, we are going further than, than many districts in serving until June 30th. And then there is a plan to connect with a lot of our local agencies to make sure that people are well fed over the summer. And there are multiple food drives taking place throughout the summer. Uh, the, the ATH is involved, DISP is involved, the Huntington Booster Club is involved, the Huntington Council of PTAs is involved, and SEPTA is involved. These, those dates are all outlined on that letter. And I do want to mention, and please bear with me here for one second. Okay, there is a food drive this Thursday at the United Methodist Church from 4 to 8 p.m. that is sponsored by Girl Scout Troop 45. These young ladies have been working extra extraordinarily hard and they are looking for uh, non-perishable items, again, collecting from 4 to 8 at the United Methodist Church up on uh, West Neck this Thursday. So please come out and support and uh, serve our community at, at the same time. I do want to mention that uh, I, I was able to attend last Thursday and actually Mr. Palacios was there to join me. There is a group of young people, graduates from Huntington, uh, from Huntington High School and high schools all throughout the township that are uh, really approaching the matter of setting up a, a, a community that values all people and sends a message of anti-racism across the board are really looking for positive change throughout this community and communities across the country for that matter. But I, I really do wanna to give these kids the commendation that they deserve for approaching this in the right way. They were part of the, the march up New York Avenue and then understood that, okay, we, we've done that, we've sent our message. Now it's time for us to, to, to be present, to have a seat at the table, to discuss with our town officials, our county officials, our state officials, uh, school officials, et cetera, some of the things that, that, that they're looking for that, that they can help with in terms of putting us on a path to really helping send the right message to our communities uh, and, and understanding the importance of celebrating, uh, celebrating a community, particularly ours, that is as, as diverse as it comes. So I'd like to commend that group and, and they really did such a fantastic job and, and to give Kevin Thorborn, who is working with them as well, um, a shout out. Uh, I, I was so proud of, of many of the more Huntington High School kids. I was so proud of them from top to bottom. They really approached this in the right way. And they, uh, they, they made a name for themselves. Not that they didn't have it already, but um, I, I'll say it again. Pride is all I felt throughout that meeting. The other major focus right now is um, reopening. And I can tell you that we are approaching this from every level. We have a district committee in place and subcommittees that are talking about everything from soup to nuts. Uh, I am working with the Suffolk County Superintendents Association. We have a task force there that is, um, again, looking at this from every angle and perspective. And the state regional reopening task force meeting. So the, the county meeting is tomorrow. The state meeting is on Wednesday morning. And we are just hopeful that we have additional guidance to work with such that we are able to set a plan Right now, that, that date of July 15th is kind of random and arbitrary because we're still waiting for, for a great deal of guidance and direction from agencies like the Department of Health and the Governor's Office. But uh, we're, we're moving forward with multiple, with multiple plans, with alternatives, and our hope is that we can, we can start as seamlessly as possible in September with whatever plan is implemented. So more to follow there. We will certainly keep the board and the community informed every step of the way. Yes, the last day of classes technically was last week, but the communications will, will continue throughout the summer. Thank you very much. Can you unmute Christine? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, you got, okay. Yes, yes. If I can find her, there she is. Okay, you're unmuted. Thank you. I, I, can I ask you, because I, I
oh, question, a couple of statements back. Um, the the um, new school meeting that you went to, are, were there like specific things that they mentioned about school? Could we hear what they, what their ideas were about changes that we could help with? Or I, I would have loved to hear what they had to say. Yeah, I mean, I, I can, and Xavier chime in here as well. Uh, they, we, we talked a little bit about diversity in hiring. We talked a little bit about uh, some of the initiatives that we have taken. There were, there were only, uh, there were two school districts represented there. Um, and I, I know that this was a town-wide thing, but we talked a little bit about some of the initiatives that we have engaged in, in terms of um, implicit bias training and cultural proficiency training. And we also talked about some of the things that, that we need to, to take to the next level. So um, a lot of it was not directly related to schools, but um, you know, it, was, it was just an interesting, it was an interesting meeting. It was interesting to hear from the kids on all aspects of, of, of their thoughts and feelings. Um, but I think they're gonna continue their, their, their good work in this regard and they, they need to continue to have a seat at the table. I don't know if actually wanna add anything. Yeah, I think they were very professional in the way that they presented, they were very informed. They did their due diligence, they did their homework, and I suspect that they're here to stay. Uh, you'll, you'll be hearing from them on a regular basis. I think that Amaru has joined us in the, uh, in the meeting as well. So the kids are very well prepared and they're looking for equity in education. They're looking for hiring that reflects the population of the school uh, among the many things that, that they were looking for with, with respect to schooling. And they're looking to learn as well because there are certain things that honestly they can take more comprehensive action on the more that, that they know how things operate to start. And I think that was, that was part of the process. So they asked a lot of questions. They asked questions of our town, county, state officials, the police, uh, the schools, you know, part, part of, to say knowledge is power is, it's not an understatement. And the, the more, the, the more that, that they know, the more that we know together, the more that we can do together. Okay. I just put it out there in public that as an individual, I'm putting, I'm, making myself available. Well, my phone number and email are all really easy to get. And I'm available to talk to anybody who, who wants to give me ideas of, of, of what's going forward. So just saying, you know, on an individual basis. Very good. Did anybody else have any comments or questions for Mr. Polanski about the items that he touched on? All right then, I guess that's going to take us to our first public commentary. Um, so it's same rules on Zoom as it would be in, the, in a regular meeting. You have three minutes. You should state your affiliation to the district and then you can make your comment or ask your question. Like I said, it has to stay under three minutes. And in general, the first things that we um, address during public commentary are the items for discussion and action, which tonight I think are just um, retirees, correct? But in any case, if there's time left, which I'm assuming there will be, then you can really touch on anything. So I'm gonna hand it off. If you click on your participant list, You'll see on the bottom an option to raise a hand. I'm gonna scroll through as we have in the past, if you'd like to comment. I thought you were telling me that, Jim. I'm like, okay. I actually I see. I here see I Mrs. go. This is Rogan and Mrs. Paul, right at the top of my screen here. I wonder why they're here. Yeah, I wonder why that might be. Moral support in case I start blubbering. Okay, hold on. Blake, I see you, I'm coming. There will be blubbering. <laughs> it's been a really weird day. I'll tell you that much. Sandy Saginaw is raising her hand. All right, I got Blake first. Go, go ahead, Blake. All right, my name is Blake Dunn. I have three students in the Huntington District, and I work at the Jack Abrams STEM Magnet School. And my comment today is for my dear friend, Jennifer. You have been a fierce advocate for the students and staff of the Huntington District. Now, despite your kind and generous and loving nature, you do not suffer fools gladly. And I love you for that. You love served you this community with dedication and honor and compassion. And I couldn't be more proud to be part of this district and your friend. So thank you for everything that you've done. Love you, Blake. I love you back. Thank, thank you, Blake. You. And I'm going to ask you to mute yourself, and I'm going to find Sandy Saginaw. 
You know what, let me do it this way. I'm realizing I made a rookie error and didn't bring tissues okay. to my table. <laughs> Sandy, you're on Hold on. Wait, Sandy, wait, wait, wait. Oh my God, I just almost tripped over a cord. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, thanks, sweetie. <laughs> Here comes Will with a box of tissues. All right, go. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces that I haven't seen in a while. My name is Sandy Saginaw, and I've had two children that have graduated um, through Huntington Schools. I'm here to talk about Jen, who as we know, it's kind of in the retiree category, I think, right? So I think it's appropriate to talk to, about her now. I moved to Huntington 23 years ago, and the first person I met was Jen Hebert. Many of you know Jen as a fair-minded, eloquent speaker, hardworking school board member who diligently has served in this capacity for nine years to as the school board president in these past two years. Tonight, I'd like to give you a little more insight to the person I have known and loved. And some <laughs> of this will be very familiar to many of you. Some of this will be new. Jen is an excellent cook. Those of you on the board, I'm sure, have benefited from her generous sharing of muffins, noodle pudding, and rugula. I warn you, though, when you ask her for a recipe, don't think you are getting a simple plan. Ten steps later, you might have something remotely close to what she can cook or bake. She can take a complicated process and turn it into a delicious dish that is irresistible. Her tenacity serves her well in all areas of life, including school board duties. Jen is a foodie through and through, but... She's also enjoying the simpler things of life. There isn't a time where Mr. Softy cannot pass the block without her running out saying, I need a vanilla cone with rainbow sprinkles. Oh, you're giving away my secrets. <laughs> Going out to lunch with Jen, she's the first person to order the biggest dish of French fries you will ever see. And she will take two and then pass the rest along to the others of us who are on a diet and say, eat the rest. Her generosity, whether it be with food, time, or money, has benefited countless individuals and organizations in our district. Jen is also a very dedicated gardener. Many times we have shared orders from our schools, plant sales, and spent summers comparing plants, how many vegetables we harvested, etc. This last season, though, has thrown us for a loop. Jen excitedly called me and said she took soil from her compost pile to make a new planting bed. Without planting anything in it, little tiny seedlings came up, and she called me very excited. Sandy, Sandy, I've got seedlings for us. They're cucumbers. I said, okay, Jen, I'll come over and we'll look at them. I ran over. Lo and behold, she gave me some. We now have something in our garden that <laughs> does not look anything like a cucumber. Her comment to me, well, maybe we'll be eating acorn or butternut squash. <laughs> Mystery being, squash. <laughs> being flexible is not her only strength, but has been definitely advantageous in dealing with many different situations that have come her way during these last nine years. Although these stories are simple, Jen knows how to handle simple things in life to help steer our district, whether it be through a graduation or through a pandemic. Her, gener her, gener her generosity, dedication, empathy, and flexibility have only been assets to a position that is sometimes can really throw a curveball to a plan. Jen, we thank you for all these years of service to our district that started even before you became a school board member. I look forward to a big plate of french fries and a complicated squash recipe soon. <laughs> thank you school board and everybody stay well throughout this whole summer. 
Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. That was beautiful. And I love you and your family. Send my love. Thank you. We love you too. I know. <laughs> I'm very lucky. Need an applause track. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> was, uh, although that would be good because I could cover up the weeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Amaru, I think that you should be unmuted. Who are we looking for? I'm trying to unmute Amaru. Okay, you're good. I'm good? Yep. Okay, yes. Uh, I was uh, just asking a question to Mr. Polanski about uh, the summer uh, reading curriculum and what exactly is on it, because I know when I was listening in, it said that uh, principals are uh, exchanging like different books and things like that, but I feel like the climate that we're in currently with everything that's going on with uh, social injustices, I feel like this would be a big summer to implement some of those readings that uh, a lot of times um, there aren't available in schools like that. So I was asking, is there a possibility that certain books that are focused on a lot of uh, uh, empowerment of uh, black and brown people, would that be in, uh, in summer curriculum or even as an option? So. As a matter of fact, that actually began before the summer reading curriculum was even instituted or shared. So what I'm going to I'm going to ask that you do because I don't have them in front of me, Amaru. They yes. are all posted online. You can look at them. Um, you can also see some of the readings that have been done by schools during the, the last couple of months during the pandemic itself. So you can take a look there. One of the things that we have worked diligently to do is, is to upgrade our collections such yes. that they are more culturally representative. Again, it's one step, not the step, but I would encourage you to, to take a look at those lists and, and you're welcome to reach out to me and we can discuss them from top to bottom if you like. Oh yes, thank you, thank you. I, I just wanted to know, so uh, I feel like a lot of the people, uh, I guess a lot of kids that are still in high school were just letting me know about certain books and things like that that they don't get the chance to read. So I just wanted to just ask that even if it's on there. So uh, what exactly website would it be on? Or it's, on the it be it's on the school district okay. website. There's actually okay. a quick, quick, a quick, uh, a quick click, thank you for the tongue tie, um, Mr. Polanski, a quick click link that goes right to the summer reading program. And you can yes. be able to find them elementary, um, middle school and high school, they're all there. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Okay. That's yes. a great and very concrete suggestion. I love when a suggestion comes up and it's something you can actually act on right away. That's wonderful. That's what that that that's what's happening right now. They are no, thinking that's what, that's about great. exactly what uh, what types of things can be done to promote the type of society that we want. And Absolutely, that's, good constructive forward motion. I love all of that. Yes. Thank you, Amaru. Yes, thank you. All right. I to add something to that. Also, there's there might not be every. So some of the classes, like the AP classes, I don't know that they're all listed there, and there are a lot of different types of books that are assigned in those classes. I'm not sure that all those summer assignments are part of that summer <clears throat> reading tab, but uh, they might be. They're, they're all recommendations. So we took out, I'm just trying to see if there's anybody else with a hand up here. Uh, we, we took out basically the requirement that reading be done and that assignments be done following because the idea is to, to get the kids to, to really pick books of interest and enjoy what they read over the summer and not feel like they're being uh, weighted down and forced to read this versus that in alignment with the class that they're going to take. So right. obviously advanced placement preparation is, is part of it. They're not right. obviously required to do that work over the summer, but they certainly can give themselves a head start. But Listen, anything that, that children want to read over the summer, we want to encourage them to do so. Mm -hmm. Emily Rogan has her hand up, Jim. I hate to ask a favor, but could you call in Emily next? She might have to hop off and hop back on later. I didn't even realize that she was on the call. Mrs. Rogan, yeah. 
<laughs> it never stops. <laughs> Some things never change. Okay. Am I muted? That was very funny. It was so predictable and so funny. I literally did not see you. <laughs> totally messing with me. Totally. <laughs> Oh, it feels good. It feels like old times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Emily Rogan. I, uh, I was a parent in the district. I still live in the district. I have two kids that graduated from Huntington and um, I served on the school board for a bit of time. <laughs> and uh, I had, I'm here to speak also um, about my friend Jennifer. Um, I did not prepare anything nearly as eloquent as what Sandy said. This is really just off the cuff. And um, I just wanted to also share a little bit of stories, but more really just say thank you to Jen, because having had the opportunity to serve together with you made my experience even that much better. Um, but for those of you who maybe weren't around back when Jennifer Hebert started showing up for school board meetings. A million years ago. A long time ago. Um, I was fairly new on the school board and she showed up at one meeting and it was a tough budget year. And uh, the budget process was not nearly as um, clear and as transparent and as um, easy to follow along for the community as it is now. And she raised her hand and came up to the mic and started asking about a truck. And we were busy <laughs> trying to figure out how we were gonna pay for a whole boatload of things and where the money was gonna go. And she goes, I wanna talk about this truck that's on the budget. And quite frankly, I didn't even realize that there was this truck in the budget because the way it was written and everything, and she would not relent about the truck. And at the time, I think it was a conversation around some library funding. I can't remember the specifics, but she's like, Primary well, school librarians. fix the old truck. Why are you buying a new truck? But put the damn money in the libraries. And that was when she caught my eye because I was looking for people who, you know, I thought would be great trustees. And uh, I went up and chatted with her after that meeting. And it, then we had lunch. And um, it kicked off a friendship first. Jen wasn't ready to run because of some personal reasons at the time, but she said, don't worry, I'm gonna be up there with you. And as it turns out, she ran um, and became a trustee at a time when we really needed people who were there for the right reasons. And we had a lot of damage to undo and we had a lot of fixing to fix. And um, Jen came on the board and she was just about getting the work done. And I was so grateful and so relieved to have somebody else that wanted to just kind of blow through the crap and just do what we were there to do, which was make the district the best it could be and do the work and support the kids and support the teachers and the administration. And we just, you know, and it wasn't just the two of us, I'm just talking about Jen. There was a lot of other people involved along the way, but um, <laughs> we- But it was really us. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i just felt like there were a lot of really really great people that i served with but i got the really the wonderful opportunity to become friends with this woman who was so incredibly insightful who had and this is her phrase the courage of her convictions she always always does the right thing and stands up for what's right and helps the people around her when maybe they're a little bit lost or a little unclear and sometimes it gets a little murky about what the right thing to do is. Jen is never murky. She just knows. And um, she's candid. She's kind. She's empathic. She's sensible. She's smart. She's really funny. And like Sandy said, she's an amazing baker and an amazing cook. So she kept us very well fed in executive session for a long time. So, I mean, I could go on and on as everybody knows, and I won't, but I just, first of all, I'm really proud of you for doing a really hard thing, which is stepping away from something that you feel really passionate about. I shared that sentiment a couple of years ago, but I, I'm excited for you to start this next journey of your life 
And I know you're going to bring the same passion and the same commitment and devotion to whatever you decide to do next. And it will be wonderful. And we are all better for having had you on the board. And I'm lucky because I get to stay friends with you forever. So that's right. You do. I love you. Love you too. Thank you for all those kind words. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. That was very nice. It really was all of the, all of everything. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Am I supposed to lead this meeting? <laughs> Hold on. Another party is um, requesting. This is Hall. Mr. Polanski. Uh, <laughs> you trip me up when you call her Mrs. Hall. I never I quite know it's going to be Barry. I actually have last name in there, but I guess I had to throw it. I've got so many names, but I'd use all my three minutes stating all my names. <laughs> I'll just say I'm Barry. I'm part of the Huntington community, and I will be brief because I know you guys, it's a beautiful summer night and want to get out of here. But Jen, I would be remiss if I missed this meeting and congratulate you for a very difficult decision, I know, because yeah. it is a really hard decision to step away when you're working with amazing people and doing really great work. And I think everybody is feeling the same feelings that it's just going to be really different on the board without you. You've been an amazing leader, um, saying nine years on the board. Yeah, nine, nine years. What's that? We've been doing this since PTA days at Jefferson. So I think it's like a hundred years. <laughs> um, so that takes I think a lot. you might be right. It's about a hundred. About and that. You've worked really hard at every single thing that you have done, but you've done it graciously. You've done it open-mindedly, and you've been such a great friend to so many people. And meeting you again a hundred years ago at one of the when we used to call them the sister meetings. Mm -hmm. I think I met you. Fashion show. Yeah, maybe. Ooh. Um, and just clicked from there and just knew that, you know, we shared such a similar vision and you have been such a true inspiration and leader. Um, I'd say we laughed and cried. I laughed. You cried. That's about right. Yeah. Yeah. I will. And I will end on what Sandy said about you and cooking. I still haven't gotten the mac and cheese recipe. So in closing, now that you have Mondays off and a lot more free time, I would like the mac and cheese recipe. Congratulations on your retirement. Congratulations to all the retirees. Congratulations on passing the budget in such a crazy, crazy time. Mr. Polanski, I don't know how you've managed to hold everything. I, I would look up in the sky every night to see your head Exploding. <laughs> yeah, just going around the <laughs> So I do want to thank the entire board for all that they've done during this Thanks, crazy Bear. And Jen, Monday yeah. is now. We're there, baby. Love right. you. Love thank you, you, thank you, Bear. See you soon. All right, Karen Fisher, I'm coming. Karen Fisher. You're on. I'm on. Can you hear me? I can't. Yeah, I miss Fisher. I thought I was done with these Zoom meetings for a little while, but I <laughs> came back for a little bit more. Uh, I just like to take this opportunity to congratulate the three people that are retiring that I worked with. I had the honor and privilege with working with these people for many, many years. They were very supportive in what I did for my phys ed, my field days, things like that. Uh, Eileen Wallace, Joanne Tarmina and Cindy Tejan, uh, amazing, amazing coworkers. Um, you know, you work with them for a very, very long time. It was a wonderful, wonderful ride. And uh, whew, uh, didn't like it choked up a little bit, but. Um, you got this. Yeah, I can do it. Thank you so, so much for everything that you've done. And uh, you were amazing. And it was so exciting. And my honor to work with you at Jefferson. And um, Jen Hebert, 
I remember you running for the board. I was very, very excited uh, to, to have you run for this position. I sat across from you for all these years, so I figured yes. I'd click on the mic and say, thank you very much, congratulations, and uh, good luck to all of you in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Karen. Okay, I think we are. There's, there's an, someone raising their hand physically. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for it. I don't see it. He's saying a, a physical hand, not a. I, I don't see the physical like a hand. Picture. Virtual. The person that is just iPhone. She's waving. Huh. Oh, oh, I had you unmuted. Okay, you're unmuted. Hi. Hi. Am I allowed to public um, comment? You sure can. You just have to ident identify yourself. Sure, no problem. Um, how's everybody? Good. Okay. We're all good, right? Yep. Okay. Who's speaking? Um, my name is Bill. Um. I wrote y'all a letter. Oh, Chris, and I'd just like Chris, to speak a little bit about special education, if that's okay. Yeah, you have, you, you've got a, a, a three minute time period. Just know okay. what you're saying. Go ahead. I'll freeze right through it. No did, problem. Did you identify yourself? Yes, my name is. It was choppy, though. That was the problem. It yeah, was the, the connection was breaking up a little bit. Okay, so from here on, I have three minutes, right? Yes. Okay. My name is Kristen Cambria DeVille. Yes, I am you got your letter. Thank you. As a mother of a 17 year old student who is about to enter her senior year in your special education life skills program, my daughter Layla loves school. She loves going to school to be with her teachers, her friends, and to learn. At this point, with much advocacy from her teachers, and her family, she was doing well. However, it could be better. Like many students and teachers, distance learning this spring was a very big challenge for Layla. She lost her routine and with that, her enthusiasm to learn. Through no fault of any teachers, dis distance learning is very, just very difficult for a child with special needs. There are sensory difficulties, concentration loss, and comprehension challenges, which make learning very confusing. Oh, I gotta get through this letter. All right. This letter is to ask to be included in the decision-making process for how, when, and where the special needs children will be educated this up upcoming fall. Unfortunately, there are already many rumors of what may or may not take place. And I hope that by including a handful of parents, this will be alleviate the pressure of not getting things right for this special education population. These kids need very specific arrangements in order to learn in a calm and productive classroom setting at the high school. And if they are not in the classrooms, they will need to have a much more constructive web-based platform in order to learn. How it was structured this past spring fell very short of what Layla and others needed. We hope that there is a research into special needs district learning programs and more attention on how those would be implemented. I appreciate your taking the time you don't need to hear the rest. I'm just asking for some Ms. help. Ms. DeVille, the did you receive the email response to the letter that you wrote? Yes. And okay, I just yeah. want to make sure you got that. And I'm going to yeah. reiterate my suggestion there that, you know, we do have a 
fairly large group that's sitting in a series of subcommittees in terms of reopening and, and a lot of, I'm not gonna say the distance learning part, but a lot of the pieces that are going to be considered, many of them may be, may be mandated for us, but I will strongly suggest that you call either uh, Diana Rich or Linda. I'm talking to her. Okay, just wanna make sure yeah. that, that uh, we were on the same page. I appreciate because, that, thanks, okay. I've been on the phone every day. And, and please continue to do that because that's the only way that, that all voices yeah. are going to be heard. We have yeah. SEPTA involved in this, but it's not every member. So if, if you wanna be an active part of this, we encourage that, please. Let me know where and what, that's fine. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chrissy. that okay i think we got it okay so we're going to, we will move on to the items for discussion and action which are actually our district retirees and obviously we have three really special ones as miss fisher commented about she almost made me weep those are names from my past from my jefferson days so well there's actually a a, a larger group of, of very special people and uh, i will say um, that it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, the end of every year is bittersweet. Uh, the bitter component is our knowledge that several people who have given their hearts and souls to the district, they'll be moving on to the next stages of their lives. Uh, that's also the sweet component. We're excited for them as, as they take those next steps. Um, I, I want to apologize to the group of people that I'm about to introduce because, you know, obviously this is not the way they wanted to end. We missed out on spending the last three months with them. We feel shortchanged, so I can only imagine how they feel having the last three months of enjoying their students and their, their colleagues taken from them. Uh, I know this is not the way they wanted to go out. Uh, we do look forward, and I mentioned this in my communication to them, we look forward to inviting them back in the fall or as soon as we can to celebrate them in the manner that, that they deserve. Uh, and then tonight, as we will again in the fall or when we can, uh, we just we, we need to, to take a, a moment to thank them for playing integral roles as, as part of our Huntington Union Free School District family. These are terrific people who have done so much for the district. And I'm going to uh, acknowledge them each, each individually. And I tried to figure out the best way to do this. So I'm going to go in, in order of years. I hope that uh, does not suggest anything other than the experience that they have with the district. Um, <laughs> To start, I'm going to keep it brief because I, I, I know we're, we're um, we don't want to hear this drone on, but uh, these people deserve this recognition. I'd like to thank and congratulate Maria Lanzot, the ENL teacher. She was at Washington for a lengthy period of time, finished at Woodhull and, and Finley. Uh, she retired a little bit earlier in the year. Uh, someone who truly cares about kids and who has done a, a, a great job for us and for the children of Huntington. I don't know if you're on tonight, but thank you, Maria, for everything you have done. Nancy Corcoran, I don't think I saw you here. She is an, an aide at Finley, just a, a, a down to earth and just very nice person who cares deeply about kids. We'd like to thank her for her service to the district for the past, again, 12 and a half years. Uh, similarly, Ann Donegan, another aide. Uh, she has been in, in multiple places in the district during her 14 years here. I'd like to formally thank her for her time, energy and, and effort in support of our kids for all the time that she's been here. Gabriella Meyer, aide at Flower Hill, has been with us for 17 years. And, and again, we're sorry that these folks conclude with us at a time when we can't do this in person, but we'd like to thank Gabriella for her time and service to the district and to the district's children and families. Um, oh, I missed uh, Suzanne Milner. Teaching assistant at Finley, 15 and a half years of dedicated service to our children and to, uh, to our district families. Uh, so proud of everything that all of these people have done, and that certainly includes Suzanne and the efforts that she has put in in support of our kids. Okay, I'm just looking to see who's here, and I probably should stay in one place here. Judy Pazienza, I'm looking right at her, and I'm, I'm looking at her background, and, and I, I need to give Judy a special shout out. Um, she actually officially retired back in, in November um, science teacher at the high school, physics teacher extraordinaire. She's done some wonderful things for kids over the years. Uh, we, we agree we didn't want to start her and have her um, leave a physics classroom in the fall and have the kids in, uh, instruction interrupted. So we 
we placed her in a situation where she worked for the first part of the year with our kids at STEM. Um, and I need, to, I need her to hear this because she could have taken this in any, any number of directions. She worked her tail off to make the experience for our kids in, in the Jack Abrams STEM robotics program uh, as special as it gets. It's something that she is very passionate about and I know she is continuing at, 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 in the next stage of her life with the first robotics program. So I do want to thank her. I've, I've known her for a long time. She actually student taught when I was teaching at Syasset High School. Um, just a, 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 a terrific human being and, and I'd like to thank her for her efforts and for everything that she has done for her kids through the years. Okay, next. Um, this young lady was mentioned before, Eileen Wallace. Uh, Karen mentioned her. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I actually, I don't wanna lump them together. I actually thought Wallace, Tayermina were one person when I got here. <laughs> uh, I know that, that Eileen and Joanne worked hand in hand in an integrated setting, but um, they have been uh, just fixtures at Jefferson for so many years. I'd like to thank Eileen for the many, many positive years that, that she has influenced kids in, in Huntington. Uh, thank you so much, Eileen, and, and uh, we're gonna miss you terribly. Um, I know Cindy is here. She's not on my screen at the moment. Uh, Cindy was, I, I so, so enjoyed visiting the libraries wherever they were, whether it be at Jefferson at Southdown, because I, if I walked anywhere near the library, I would basically be tackled and brought in there and shown from top to bottom what, what a library program should look like. Uh, she's a terrific librarian and very strong-willed, and I know that's a compliment, Cindy. Um, I, I, did you tell me you wanted to stay another year? Is that, is that a, <laughs> <laughs> she puts together a, a, just a dynamic library program and she makes sure the kids have fun. And that's, that's what it's all about. Kids want to go into that, that library during lunch periods and off time so they can, they can simply learn more and work with each other and learn how to collaborate. Thank you, Cindy, for everything you've done. You've left a legacy here for sure, as has everybody else. And no, I saw him. Uh, bienvenido. There he is. Um, math teacher at Huntington High School. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Just, just a genuinely delightful person. And you, you know what? The first thing we look for when, when we hire a teacher here is they need to like kids. And you know what? Bienvenido. He likes being around kids. Kids like being around him. And for that reason and that reason alone, take a, you remove his expertise in math. Even though he has it, they learn from him because they like being around him. And add in that, that math talent that he has, it's a recipe for success. Thank you so much uh, for all the, the great years at the high school. Bienvenido. I want to make sure I don't miss anybody here. All right, Joanne Termina. And again, Eileen Wallace and Joanne Termina are completely different people, but, but because they they've, were such a valuable combination for many years at Jefferson and it didn't matter what setting that, that Joanne or Eileen were put in, they were gonna have, they were gonna find success. But Joanne is a uh, 20 year member of the Huntington faculty and she has done uh, terrific things for kids through the years. And um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a strange place without some of these people among us. But thank you, Joanne, for everything that you have done for the past 20 years. I don't know if Patty is on with us tonight. But Patty Hurley is a secretary in the guidance office. Uh, terrific person. She has, um, she has her thumb on the pulse and basically I'd like to thank her first of all for helping in the transition uh, to, to help welcome Jeanette and, and make things that much easier for her as she completes her first year in Huntington. But Patty is a fixture at the high school and is part of the reason that the high school is as organized as it is. So thank you, Patty. I don't see you here, but please know that we appreciate everything that you have done and we'll miss you terribly. Okay. Phyllis Sadusky, I think I saw Phyllis as well. Just a super, super phys, uh, special education teacher. She is, uh, I see Christine, she's nodding. Um, she's just, a, you, you put a child in her care, that child is going to succeed. Uh, organized, caring, compassionate, all the tools that really drive kids on that, that road to success and, and uh, honestly, we can't replace these people. We can fill we can fill the position, but we can't replace these people in, in so many respects. And, and Phyllis, you're right there among them. We'll miss you terribly, and and um, you've earned the next the next stage of your life. So please, uh, if you're still working with children, that's what we hope for all these people. That in some way, shape, or form, their impact is still felt. Okay. Um, 
Corinda Walsh. I don't know if I saw her here, elementary teacher at Flower Hill. Another, another terrific teacher who truly cares about the kids in her charge. Um, she and I were working together to, to help a specific child. Um, just these kids need to know that you care about them, particularly in, in, in situations when they're young and they need that guidance and the caring teacher makes all the difference in the world. And, and Mrs. Walsh was always one that we could count on to provide that care and point those kids in the right direction. So we thank her for her 23 years of service. Okay, Rosemary Fiorentino is actually the principal secretary at Finley, just a delightful person. And uh, I know uh, Tracy Rothel truly appreciated working with her this year. And I know John Amato appreciated many good years uh, with her before then. Um, actually, I think she came in there not too long ago, but uh, wherever you place her, she's going to, to forge that relationship and, and find out how to get that job done right. And I'd like to thank her for 24 years of service to the district in multiple capacities. I want to make sure we don't miss anybody here. I know Kathy is here, Kathy Ofiero. I see her down there. There we go. Uh, Kathy was a teacher here for many years, and she stepped into a challenging secondary chairperson role, uh, which was um, reformatted a little bit to help, uh, to, 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 to help find a way to make it successful. And honestly, it was successful. She really did a terrific job over the past couple of years. I'm, I'm sorry we don't have uh, another three, four, five years with you because you've, you've helped she was part of the transition, the eighth grade program. Uh, she's really, she's got relationships with her staff. She's got relationships with kids and she has made a difference in that math department. And you will be Miss Kathy and uh, know that we all appreciate the, what you've done for the past couple of years. Craig McKee, is Craig on? I didn't see him, but uh, Craig has been with us for 28 years. He is a science teacher, I believe, uh, good chunk of his time was, was spent at the middle school, but I think it was also a high school stint in there. Uh, just a, 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 a really delightful, sweet human being. The kids adored him. Um, another person without him around, it's gonna be a, a, a little bit of a strange place, but he was a, a fixture in that Regents Earth Science program at the, uh, at the middle school level for a long period of time. And uh, we wish him well in the years moving forward, good health and, and everything that goes with that. But thank you, Craig, for the years that you've put in and the time that, that you've given to our kids. Mary Beth, are you on somewhere? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mary Beth Robinette, she's, uh, I'm just gonna call her the director of everything. <laughs> um, we reworked her a couple of times and, and honestly we reworked her because she's got talents in so many areas. She is the district's chief information officer. She is the Director of Elementary Math. She's also the Director of Instructional Technology. When we, we felt that she had too much and we wanted to take some of the math away from her, she insisted on keeping the elementary math program under her charge because she was so passionate about it and remains passionate about it. Um, she's not actually retiring yet. She's gonna stay on with us for at least another two months. So I don't even know why I'm having this conversation right now. <laughs> I saw her in the hallway today and I told her it may be even longer than that. Um, but she performs um, immeasurable and very important services for this school district. And I can rely on her on a moment's notice to, to pull data and uh, you know, honestly to make sure that everything that we submit to the state education department is accurate. And she's doing all this while she is guiding elementary teachers throughout the district in, in terms of um, the current math standards and being innovative and creative in the classroom. So. Uh, I might even, I'm going to pretend that I'm not saying this right now because she's not leaving yet, but um, she's going to, like all these people, she's going to be a, a hard pair of shoes to fill. Okay, make sure I didn't miss anyone here. And I think I have one left, last but not least, and I know he's not with us tonight. And this is, no, two left, I'm sorry. Uh, 31 years of service for a uh, a very special man who was a, who has been a fixture as a music teacher at the elementary level. Um, he could always make me laugh. He is uh, somebody who really got a great deal out of the kids and honestly would motivate these kids to continue with their instruments from the time they picked them up in fourth grade through the intermediate school level and into the secondary into the secondary domain. Again, he. He sent a, a beautiful note to myself and the board, and I'm sorry he can't be with us tonight, but Mitch Millay, this, this is for you. 
and we hope to see in the fall when we recognize everybody here in, in person. And last, uh, but, but certainly not least, 32 years of service. I'm not sure if she's with us tonight, but Sandy Brusca, a, uh, an aide at Woodhull, 32 years of service is nothing to sneeze at. It means you love what you do and you really care about kids and you really care about Huntington kids. So thank you, Sandy, for everything that you have done. And we wish you, the, we wish you all the very best of, of everything moving forward. We're gonna move on. All the retirees, congratulations and thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for our district and our students. I just wanna say that um, my, my SEPTA friends would want me to just note how ridiculously high number of SEPTA honorees there are on that list of retirees that you just <laughs> So that's the caliber of people that are retiring this year. Tremendous. It's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's kind of I sad. I can't even tell you the exact I, number. I'm going to walk by the Southdown Library and not get tackled and dragged in there and, and really shown how a library operates. Mm -hmm. Cindy, Cindy, this is, this is going to be a new, a new experience for me with, with somebody else in that library. I don't know how that's, that's going to work. And she's raising her hand, which scares me, but I'm, go, I'm going to open it up. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Polanski? I can. Okay, don't be scared. <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> I'm not staying, but um, as I told Mr. Polanski, when your uh, principal is younger than your child and the children you're teaching are younger than your grandchildren, it's probably time to go. But, uh, this year, I saw him in my library more than I've ever seen him in my entire life. And when I heard that Jen was not running for the board again, I decided I had to go. So I had a kid, kids, right? I've had all the Dwyer children. And uh, I did see that you did not post my job. So uh, I'm hoping that now that we had full-time library and we got all the databases that you would keep that in mind. So you know that I've worked in three districts for a plethora of administrators and my heart has always been in Huntington. It is my home mm -hmm. and I will sorely miss going there, but not enough to want to stay another year. <laughs> so, thank you all for everything, and um, I will miss all of you. We'll miss you, we too, will miss Mrs. T. Congratulations. Thanks, Cindy. Congratulations. Thank you. Cindy was actually the reason that I came up with that idea about the truck that didn't need replacing. <laughs> <laughs> Years ago, it was. It was to hang on to her for that exact reason. And if anybody, any of the other retirees would like to, uh, to say something, feel no obligation, but I uh, certainly don't want to uh, take that away from you. Eileen? No? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, wait a minute. Okay. I know it's intimidating. It, but please know how much we appreciate all of you and we will miss you terribly. And please don't be, uh, please don't be strangers. Okay. All right, there, there is actually one more retiree. <laughs> I was like, we're moving on to curriculum and instruction. <laughs> I'm going to let the Board of Education take the lead on this one. Hello, Hello friends. Okay. Who wants to go first? Okay, I'll go first. Uh, since I'm the, the newest, um, I've only been on the board with Jen for a year. Um, I'll be brief, but I realized when I was thinking about it, Jen, I met you 10 years ago. Um, and we served on a short-lived district committee predates uh, Jim um, and that's when I met you and I realized in thinking about uh, the last 10 years and sitting in the audience for nine of those years I have learned a tremendous amount from you uh, and I realized that I took what I learned from you from observing you over the years from talking to you from listening to your point of view um, and I'm going to try and use those things on the other side of the table uh, in the coming two years that are left on my term. And I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you probably have no idea, but I have learned a tremendous amount. I've learned to listen better. I've learned to, um, to, to even to think about all those different sides and, and admit when I have been wrong or have not really listened to all those sides and you are really probably one of three people I can think of that 
in Huntington who I have admired for many, many years and uh, appreciate. So going forward, um, my garden is thriving and mm -hmm. I will have a lot of vegetables and mm -hmm. you and I will spend a little bit of time sharing recipes and getting together in the future and eating a lot of food together. That sounds really wonderful. And I have to say, Michelle, that it, the, one of the hardest things about walking away from this board is the, leaving the chance to work with some of the trustees that have just come on the board more recently, because I think you're all outstanding. And I think that, you know, you've, you've been such a great asset to the board and you, it's been an honor. Thank you. I'll go next because I came in right before Michelle and I regret that I only had two years to serve with you. Me too, Linda. Yeah, and I thank you for your compassionate, intelligent, rational and reasonable approach to everything. Um, you are a true role model and, um, and I cannot thank you enough for your many years of wonderful service and leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hold on before whoever goes next. Did anybody come in the room to you? Oh Jen? my gosh, are you kidding me? It was almost hard. I, th <laughs> there is a, a virtual, what you all don't realize is there's a virtual pile of gifts on the table right okay. now. Well, we're gonna do that last. I just wanted to make sure they were there. They're all here. I can't even imagine. I mean, I, I thank you. We're, I, we're I, gonna do that after. And I'm, and I'm already completely flown away. Mm -hmm. So thank you. One of the guys want to go? I'll, sure, go, I'll, before go. All, I'll go before all the good stuff is said. I'm going to be short and simple. Jen, I've known you, you know, a long time, even before we got to working together on the board. And I got to say, the highest compliment I can give you, you've always been very passionate and you've always uh, spoken from your heart and you've been true to it. And you really can't go wrong when you do that. So thank you very much for all of your time. And uh, we appreciate all the service you've given us. Thank you, Bill. It's been a good, we had a good go. Please tell Karen that she taught me a lot of what I knew. <laughs> it's true. Karen Dwyer is my PTA mentor and she taught me a lot of what I know. Okay. I Tom, can go. rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go. It's okay. Good. So Jen, as you know, I'm, I'm, I have to type stuff out because otherwise I get off track and I get too emotional. So I do too, Tom. <laughs> I enjoy watching that. I, I know you do. That's, that's so excuse the, the reading, but that's what it's going, going to be a little bit. Um, your motivation to run for school board nine years ago has helped to transform our district from a disjointed, tense environment to one that is more inclusive, caring, and one that provides more educational op opportunities and experiences for all of our students. This is truly a reflection of you and your nine years on this board. That said, I'm still confused as to why you didn't run again. <laughs> I think me, it's pretty clear, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> for me, beyond just missing you as part of our board, I will especially miss your input, thoughtfulness, and ability to weigh the pros and cons of an issue or problem to come to consensus. Not to mention your collaboration, kindness, and delicious snacks during executive session. <laughs> there's not enough words of gratitude to let you know all your effort, I'm sorry, there's not enough words of gratitude to let you know how all of your efforts in dealing with the challenges and adversities of being a trustee, board vice president, and president have mattered and made an impact. That impact can be found on the faces of the children in pre-K through 12th grade in our district. There are the faces that you have provided guidance and opportunities for as a trustee guidance that will continue on as a legacy of your efforts. You have made a difference. I hope you'll cherish the many hours of free time you will now gain by not having to spend, spend that time much on meeting prep, BOCES dinners, and other events. Uh, not to mention the calls from Jim. <laughs> Enjoy your Monday nights and all that time. You've earned it. If I haven't said it enough, you'll be missed in so many ways. Personally, I'll miss you as a friend, colleague, fellow voice of reason, and of course, tequila buddy. <laughs> but, but, I, but I truly wish you nothing but the best. That said, I leave you with the only words that every school board trustee never hears. Thank you.
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That was lovely, and I appreciate the laughs. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I think we've run out of adjectives, but I, I met this woman over nine years ago. She comes into my office with a very loud man. Um, <laughs> Adam Spector is this guy's name. Uh, you're on fire. You talking about bringing equity to education. You truly inspired me. I, I ran because Adam asked me to run, but you, you were the one that inspired me. You gave me the words, the reason why I should be a part of this Board of Education. Um, and the beauty about everything that you said to me that day is that you stuck to your word. You were honest. You, you believed in what you wanted to do. You believed that the, what you wanted to do to this district is make it a better district. And you've made strides that um, we will always cherish and, and you've created a legacy for what you've done. I thank you for your leadership. Uh, you've truly been a leader to me. I've learned a lot from you as many of us have. I sometimes come into this board meetings fired up, ready to go. And you remind me that uh, we're not in the business world anymore. Um, but I've given you my private words because I know that if I go too long, I will get a little choked up. You've been an inspiration to me, my family, my girls. I love um, your family. Peace. And um, looking forward to continued friendship and checking out your yard and, mm -hmm. and those beehives that you have. I wish you the best of luck. Maybe you'll Thank pick up you. a NFL on Mondays with uh, Rich McGrath. <laughs> Maybe stranger things have happened. <laughs> I don't know if stranger things have happened than that. I truly, I truly appreciate what you've done for the district. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank That's you very much. Jim, do you want to go before the gifts or after the gifts? I could talk and then you could go and then I could do the gifts. Want to do that? You tell me. Okay. All right, I'll speak and then you could speak and then I'll go back and do the gifts. Okay. 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 So um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to say, Jen, I kept coming up with these dichotomies about you. So like, you came into the district in these tumultuous times and you made it better. You helped to make it better. And it's so just like your personality because I don't think people who see you on the surface might just only see one side of you. But they don't know that you're not only kind, but you're really, really tough. And you give <laughs> off this gentle, you know, military school director lady, but you are one of the strongest people that I know. And Thank you. Your compassion is obvious to everybody when you speak, um, but if you have an in-depth conversation with Jen Hebert, you know that she is a very logical, ethical person. And while she has the compassion, it doesn't overwhelm those other parts, which is a very admirable and difficult thing to do. And now, leaving when we're in the middle of this new tumultuous time, but hopefully, with your example and what we've all learned from you, we can come out on the other side making changes that will make our district stronger and better, more inclusive. More you have my full faith, all of you. You really but do. I, I, that that dichotomy is just the nature of things. I mean, everything is really like that, but it's just so evident when you get to know Jen Hubert. Thank so, you. Um, I know that you will still be there for us because for sure, let it any other way. So I just wanted to end by saying I hope Hope that you won't mind if I continue to send you my, what I realized is often the same text over and over again, where it just says, could I just call you for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> and you'll never stop calling me. Honestly, so, don't ever expect stop that calling text, me. Expect that text, can I just call you for a minute? And expect it to be at least 60. Absolutely, <laughs> anytime, all of you, anytime. Okay, Jim. Well, Jim. <laughs> Okay, bear, bear, bear with me here because I, I, I did not want to do this randomly, so I did take some notes. Um, you know, from my perspective, there's, there's really little that, that's more important than the relationship forged between the superintendent and, and his or her board of education when leading a school district. Um, and Christine, you just used a word that I used here as well. I, I assume the superintendency in Huntington during a tumultuous time. But it was the feeling that I received from each sitting board member at the time that brought me in. It was a feeling that every trustee was ready to put their faith in me and themselves to work together toward accomplishing an important set of shared goals. So interestingly, I met Jen nine years ago. She was a new trustee as I was uh, starting out. And as I think about it, and somewhat remarkably, she was not part of the board that, that I just mentioned. She was not part of the board that, that hired me. Um, and I say remarkably because she has really been a part of my professional life in Huntington for the duration. 
Uh, the board has changed considerably since I started here, but I have, um, and, and I need to give a shout out to every trustee I've worked with. I've had the blessing of working with trustees, every one of them over the years, who possessed the drive to do all that they could in support of all Huntington children and the school district community as a whole. Um, we've had our, our successes, we've had our challenges, but the consistent piece here is that there is not a trustee that I've had the uh, pleasure of working with who is not in it for every child in this district. Um, and Jen's photo could be stamped on that statement. Um, she began and, and is ending her tenure with a passion for everything Huntington. She has opinions. She isn't afraid <laughs> to express them. But never, ever, ever did she or would she minimize the opinions or perspectives of, of others, regardless of how closely or not so closely they aligned with her own. She's much more of a listener and a doer than a talker. And don't get me wrong, she can talk, but she's always backed that talk with action and support. She has been, she is, she'll always be a champion of our district. I know that that will never change. We have done some terrific things together, all of us at, at this virtual board table. Uh, Jen has been a big part of that. I think everybody here knows that our, our Board of Education's trustees, they donate, yes, they donate their, their time to an educational system, process, and community that means a great deal to them. They are parts of, they are really anchors in this community. Each one of them is, is one of seven voices that contribute significantly to, to policy setting, to governance, and so much more. They get to genuinely enjoy the successes. They also have to deal with the challenges. And, and I can tell you that Jen's voice in all such respects will ring in my ears indefinitely, and I'll spare her the specifics. There are some certain things that, that, uh, that, that will stick with me forever. Um, and just speaking about her as, as board president, I know she's one of those seven, just one of those seven voices, but it's, it's that board president voice that I, as superintendent, will often seek first with an idea or an issue. Um, Tom mentioned those phone calls. I've had the privilege of working with three terrific, actually four, taking into account the first whom I met during my entry into the district and who still serves today. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm pleased to say that all four of those people are, are, are in this meeting right now. And uh, that is a, an honor and a, and, a, and a privilege for me. Um, and not to take anything away from the others, but, but this is Jen's night. Uh, Jen, as I'm sure you know already, there is not a, a moment I can recall during which I have not enjoyed or benefited from your impact or influence. We have been through so many highs and a few not so highs. And, and honestly, I'm so sorry that this has to be, it has to be done virtually on a pandemic related low. But everything you did, you approached it with passion, with dignity, with grace. The district and this school community are better places because of your nine years of service. On a personal note, I can't thank you enough for your presence, for your keen ability to serve as, as a sounding board, even during times when you should have just told me to can it, uh, <laughs> for never, hever, never hesitating to share your thoughts, for putting your faith in me and our Huntington team, and most importantly, for being a true friend. And the latter, by the way, as many have mentioned, that's, that's, a, that's a lifetime venture. I'd, I'd also like to, to share thanks with Jamie, Ben, Will, Sam. Shout out to Addie and Polly as well. <laughs> they allowed their wife and mom to give up her time so generously, never seemed bothered by a late night phone call, although I'm sure there were choice words for me uh, after the, the phone was hung up. And by the way, I still cannot tell Ben and Will, I cannot tell their voices apart, and probably Sam as well, but he won't pick up the phone. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank them for just being the terrific family that they, that they, they are, are and will always be. I don't have to tell you, Jen, that you will be missed. Mm -hmm. I can only hope that I have made you as proud of me and us as a district as I am of you for what you've accomplished during the past nine years. And now it's time for you and your family to reclaim some of that time. I understand that. Each time a trustee exits, they take a part of the district with them, him or her. It's actually okay because a new part has always been established by a new trustee. In this case, we welcome <laughs> Kelly to the team. And I know that Kelly has so much to contribute and will begin to build her own legacy as part of a terrific group. But Jen, I'll, I'll close by saying, know the legacy that you leave is characterized by how we have moved forward as a district, by your fortitude, your love, your compassion. Hunting Huntington is a better place because of you. And I wish you the very best of health, happiness, and calm in the years to come. Oh, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. I am... Thank you. Standing ovation for you, lady. I am just heart achingly proud of our district. I think you all know that. I, I have words written. Christine, do you want me to go first or did you want to finish up? Uh, whatever you want. 
I'm going to read then, I guess, so I can do yeah. this because this has been, I, it, it's really hard for me. And, um, you know, talk about uh, a bittersweet symphony, you know, life is kind of a bittersweet symphony. And so as much as there's a part of me that's very relieved that I'll be stepping back, there's a part of me that's just heartbroken. So anyway, here we go. Oh. My computer was going to just over here. Here we go. Hold okay. on. Okay. I've had, I'm going to read this because otherwise I'm never getting through it. So just forgive me and bear with me for a minute. <clears throat> I've had nine incredible years serving on the Board of Education, and it's truly been the most rewarding work of my life. But as hard as it is to step away, I know in my heart that it's the right time. I have so many people to thank. First and foremost, my family who's out there. <laughs> my husband, Jamie, and my boys, Ben, Will, and Sam, have been the most incredible support system that any person could ever ask for. Over the years, they've put up with my absence from home as I've attended countless hours of meetings and events, and they've graciously forgiven the many times I abandoned our dinner table to take a call, and they've endured some of my really terrible moods during the turbulent times. Sorry, guys. <laughs> My love and gratitude to them, and most especially to my husband, Jamie, who makes everything I do possible. I want to thank this wonderful community for all the love and support I've been gifted over the years. Through the good times and the bad, I've been so proud to represent our school community. Huntington is such a special place. It's like no other. It really is. It's, it's extraordinary community here. To the principals, teachers, and staff, I want you to know that you have my heartfelt gratitude and undying support. One of my only hesitations in running for the board nine years ago was that my fear that it would end the cozy relationships I had enjoyed with the staff as a PTA person because the Jefferson staff was like family to me. But luckily, while it changed my role in the district, it never changed the love and the admiration that I feel for all of you, for the principals and the teachers and every single staff member. I just want to say great thanks to all of you. I, I, there aren't the words to thank you for all the things you've done for our kids. And, um, and special shout out to James Graber for his just a real dedication and commitment to making our school district the best and always looking out for the best interests of the staff and the students. Um, I counted up over the years and over my nine years on the board, I've worked with a lucky 13 trustees. <laughs> Each and every one of them brought something to the table and I learned from each and every one of them. This can be a really tough job and I've been blessed to work with the most dedicated, collaborative, wonderful, funny team of people. And I always say this, but one thing people don't realize is how many laughs we share. And I decided that it's really mandatory that all board members have a good sense of humor. So <laughs> never elect somebody without a sense of humor. <laughs> Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention just a couple of past trustees by name as they were integral to my success on the board. First off, Adam Spector. He and I started on the board together during a really tumultuous, there's that word again, time for our district, district and it instantly bonded us. Adam's passion and energy were contagious and inspiring and I've never stopped working towards the goals that we talked about and shared nine years ago and I hope I've made him proud. Emily Rogan, who I was on here, but I think may have had to leave, is really one of the main reasons I got on the board in the first place. I would attend the board meetings and I'd watch her fighting so passionately for our students and I, it inspired me to think of myself in that role. So if you're happy with what I've accomplished, you have her in part to thank. And if you're not happy with it, then go ahead and blame her for it. <laughs> um, Barry Fears, the yin to my yang. I hope you're still out there, Barry. I just want to thank you for all the years of teamwork, for your support and perspective and laughs. And I wanted to say that I guess we'll finally have that time for that dinner at Sweet Mamas that we always talked about. Um, to my current board right here, you guys are champions. Some of you I've worked with for many, many years and feel like family to me. And some of you I have regret not working with for longer because like I said, I just think you're such an asset to the board and I've learned so much from you even in the short time we've had together. But I wanna thank you all for the teamwork and the collaboration. I'm so proud that for all of our differing perspectives, we've always managed to do as Adam would say, pull in the same direction. And um, you should know that if I didn't feel the district was in really the best of hands with our current board, I would never have felt free to step away. So 
I'll be rooting for all of you with everything I've got, but just know that you are all, you've got this. Um, I want to thank Kathy Acker, Beth McCoy, and Joanne Miranda. It's been an honor to work with such strong, smart, capable women, and I'm so grateful to each of them for everything that they've done for the district and for all the ways that they've helped me in my role on the board. So thank you to them. <laughs> and I want to thank you, Jim Polanski, although I hardly know where to start. Do I thank you for stepping in at a time when our district seemed doomed to self-implode? Do I thank you for having the vision to not only mend our district, but see it on a dynamic path forward? Or do I thank you for your tireless efforts in guiding our district and nurturing our students every day of every week of every month of every year? Yes, I thank you for all of those things. But most of all, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your team, Jim. I learned a huge amount from you. I, working alongside of you and on your team has just been the greatest learning experience. I don't want to get really emotional, but I want to thank you for that. We had a great run. <laughs> we really did. Most importantly, I want to thank the students of the Huntington School District. It has always, always, always been about you, for real. Nine years ago, when people asked me why I was running, I would say, because I think I can help. As I finished my tenure on the board, I truly hope that when people think about my time on the board, they'll think she helped. And so thank you all. Much appreciated. That, the answer to that is certainly they will. Oh, that was really hard. Emily wants you to know she was on the call. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that she was on. I got to hear that. So, like okay, I said, so, blame her. <laughs> so there are flowers there, first of all, with a card. There are flowers on a card. You want, or you can I'm going to sneak them around so I everybody tried to. can see. It was a card. Is the card still there? There is a card. There's a card Ada. in around somewhere. I'm making a lot of noise. There's a card. There's a card that I says see the card. I see the card. Is this the so card? I tried to do general words for everybody that I, I took the um, prerogative, I hope it never minds, but um, you can read it out loud or you can read it yourself. Read it. I will read it out loud if it's okay to do that. We all wanted you to know how much you will be missed and how we appreciate your love and dedication to our community and district. You are an inspiring person and we all hope that we can continue the good work we have started together. We know that we will always have your support and guidance when we need it and I hope you know that you have the same from us with love and great respect. Everybody, all of you, thank you. You guys are gonna carry on. Just finish finish the job, finish what we started. Get those get those solar panels up. <laughs> <laughs> so pick a present because they're all they're all have a little meaning. They're all so the theme of the gifts was uh, Jen will have a little extra time. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, pick the one closest to me. I, I'll, more, and I'll try to remember because I know is. that people are probably tired of okay. listening to so this. So this table. is this is I think this is the one uh, for your trips to Fire Island. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> and inside is some. Yeah, this this is awesome. Thank so you. So that you can go to Fire Island, but you'll find your way back home. It will be the first time I'll go to Fire Island and not have to come home for a meeting. <laughs> It's true. Every year I had to come back for the reorg <laughs> meeting. So thank you. I feel very spoiled like you guys went yeah, okay. to Wait, too what much is that trouble. One? Let me see the bag. Let me see the bag of that next one. Oh, it's okay. a polka dot bag with a... Okay, so that one is um, so that you can, can keep cooking for us every once in a while. <laughs> oh, I'll definitely keep cooking for you. Although Michelle is a better cook than me. So you guys are oh, wait, actually I think, trading up. Is, <laughs> box. Let me see which one it is. Maybe I made a mistake. Is it like a wait cube? A or a long box? Yeah, that, that's it. I just don't want to break anything as I take it out. What is that? Oh, that's so awesome. It's a, I know exactly. It's a handmade cookbook stand or for your iPad if you're getting really technical. It's uh, reclaim wood. 
But really for my cookbooks. Yeah, because that's cookbooks. what I wanted for most. Michelle picked it out. It's made of reclaimed wood. and It's handmade. awesome. We knew you didn't want anything ordered off of Amazon, although there is one present ordered off of Amazon. No, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, people, I know. People are probably like, pick it up, Jen. We got places to go. Wait, let me see that one. Okay, so okay it's a gold box. And it had a little card. Yeah, this is for it. one of your oh, new no. hobbies for the product you will produce. Oh, is it really? And it, another handmade gift from that we ordered by the handmade. Apparently, I am the easy person to buy for because you guys got awesome gifts for me. Is this a honey pot? It is a honey pot. Oh my God, Jamie's gonna be so excited. <laughs> so yeah, it's really his favorite. And it's blue because, you know, you bleed blue. Because right, we bleed blue, of course we do. Thank you. I'm still trying to like stop weeping. Yeah, honey pot. I feel like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what are, what are you opening? I can't see. Oh, see, I'm terrible at this. The orange okay. bag. So this is, I just ordered this at the last minute because you told us you had another new hobby. <laughs> Did you? Yes. I can't believe, Jim thinks I'm crazy, by the way. People so should know that I'm adopting chicks from... Yeah. Miss Perrette's, uh, his cox, Mrs. His cox's sister. <laughs> and this is an apron to collect her eggs. <laughs> We're fine with the chicks. It's the bees that I have the problem with. <laughs> what did you say, Jim? These are so cute. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. These are the most thoughtful gifts, you guys. Okay, and this one the is. The fact that they were in my house, too, is just a tiny bit creepy that I didn't know. <laughs> like, I mean, I really didn't do it while you were sleeping better. or anything. So oh, this, is, this is to spend with your whole family and uh, at your, one uh, of your businesses and to support one of your local businesses. Which I love. Oh my gosh, you guys, you were wildly generous and this is my favorite restaurant. <laughs> Thank you all. I, I don't even have the words to tell um, you I think how that was much right? I appreciate was that I, I don't know. Is there, was there, is there more? I think, there, I think that was everything. I think that's Everyone. everything. I mean, that was a lot of gifts. That's a lot of <laughs> gifts. So enjoy them all. No, thank you. More. Thank you for not only, I, I mean, for all the incredibly kind words. I'm just going to wear that like a blanket for the rest of this year, let's say, <laughs> but also for the incredibly thoughtful gifts because I, I well, can we're see also that you all really know me. The number of your oldest friends, so I got to make sure I was getting the right thing. Oh, see, that was very smart. Like, <laughs> clarity, done. <Yeah. laughs> all right, my friends. Well, I thank you all for everything. And well, um, at this point, I guess we'll move on so that I don't keep everybody here forever. And that means, Ms. McCoy, we are coming to you. All right. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approves CSE, CPSE submissions as delineated. Okay, we got those. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion from motion Tom. Nick. From Tom and a second from Xavier. Are there any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. Okay, whoops. Oh, this is all interesting. Okay, so I think we're going to personnel though, even though I don't have it in front of us. I have, I have a few oh, more. Oh, yes. No, there's a right, I'm sorry, there. Beth. He's That's okay. Gone. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve the district's offering the Advanced Placement Comparative Government and Politics course starting in the 2021-2022 school year pending fiscal feasibility. Okay, we've got hang that. On, hang on one second. Let me just get back to sharing my screen here. No problem. Okay. All right then. Uh -huh. All right, just a, a quick yep. comment on all of these. These, one of them in particular, but they're all obviously pending fiscal situation and cost management. So these are all proposed for the 21-22 school year. Uh, this is basically the board approving the course and that approval would be pending our ability to finance whatever the costs are associated with that course. So go ahead, Beth, I'm sorry. 
I, I think you need a motion. Need a motion Is it you, yeah, okay, so Beth, you were done. So I need a motion, please. You want me to make a motion? This is, this is yes. the first. Okay, so Christine was first and Linda was second, correct? Yes. Okay, any comments or questions? Just to All say that exciting offerings. They I, are great yeah, offerings. Very happy to see them. Yeah, the I hope you get a lot of interest in them. The AP comparative course is actually one that the board has approved before, but it's been a couple of years since we offered it. And the countries that are involved in this course have changed. So we thought it would be a good idea to put it, to, to put it back in the approval. This is the, and the curriculum here is dictated by the college board among my favorite organizations. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you could even spit that word, those words out without I getting aggravated. Yeah, they are. They're great. They look like great courses. Yeah. Um, Anybody else have any comments or questions for Ms. McCoy? All right, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Super, okay. All right, it is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve the district's offering the New York Experience Economy and Governance course starting in the 2021-2022 school year. All right, um, let's get a motion to approve the New York Experience Economy and Government Governance course. Christine and a second from Linda. Linda, any comments or questions about this particular one? Beth, you just want to give an overview of how this fits into the economics government senior year process? Yes, it's a it's a full year course. It incorporates a study of economic principles. It's aligned with the high school core economics course and all the units, including financial literacy. It's more of a project-based learning type of course. Um, it also has um, components of news literacy woven within the geographic and local issue specific units that we have in the course. It's, it, it it's also really encompasses- It does. Yeah. This will satisfy the, the participation in government and economics requirement okay. that are attached to the senior year. As mm -hmm. a full year course. Mm -hmm. And yeah. both great follow-ups to US history, so. Yeah, it is a good yeah. follow-up. And so is this meant to supplement the participation in government? That replace? It, it it's would replace it. It, it would replace it. take it as the requirement. So the, the required components are embedded in this curriculum. It's got a regional flair attached to it, and, and it will address more specifically some of the issues we, we face in the state as a uh, region close to the city and, and Long Island in general. Great time for it. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah. very excited about these. Yeah, it is timely. Both really, right? Both timely, yeah. All right, then I guess we have a motion and a second. If there are no further questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So the last one I have for tonight, uh, it is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve the district's offering the video broadcasting course starting in 2021-2022 school year pending fiscal feasibility. Okay, we have that. Let's get a motion to approve the addition of the video broadcasting course since the art curriculum. Uh, Tom, that's a motion from Tom and a second from Michelle. Michelle. Okay, did anybody... Maybe. Beth, did you want to say anything about this or anybody? Just, have any I, we're excited about all three courses, but this one is, is one that I've been extremely passionate about um, since before I came to Huntington. And I'm really excited about the opportunities that we're going to provide children with this course. It's something different than we've had before and did a lot of research in other districts to see how they ran similar courses to get ideas. And we put together all the great ideas other ha others had to make it our own. And we're really excited about it. And Hope it's something we'll be able to run in the 2021 school year. I bet you'll get a lot of interest. I just want the unfortunate piece here is the, the cost. I'm excited not only for it as a course, but I just feel like, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, co the cost comes at a time when it's uh, not an easy. Yeah, not an easy. Collection of expenditures to manage. But <clears throat> I just want to say thanks to Beth because her and I, you know how passionate I am about this particular thing as well. So it's nice to see that it's actually come to fruition and I hope uh, the financial impact uh, we can get past. Because it's, I think, a really, really um, good, pro good program for today uh, yes. and the future. The jobs of today, definitely. 
And I, I also think this course also brings the community into our schools in a way that we might not have been able to do that before. And it really gives the students a voice in the community as well. And we're just really excited about this all around. Also timely. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's what I wanted to say, but my cut my uh, Wi-Fi wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> and Beth, worked, Beth worked very hard on this and, and also um, a shout out to Eric Reynolds and um, Heather Swan and, and the folks in the art department at the high school who put in a lot of time to put a Huntington course together. Very Beth, nice. can I ask when you looked at other schools, are they partnering with any local broadcasters? Are there opportunities? Um, um, most of them, uh, that wasn't really the theme. It was more that they had a channel. Some did it in different ways where they had a daily broadcast. Some did a weekly broadcast. And we really wanted to focus on themes and issues that were affecting our students and our community. Yeah. Not just, you know, what's happening in school today, but it's really what issues are we facing as, as, as a community and how can we get information, collect information, do research, and then share our findings with everyone. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing it a little bit differently than, and then some others, but uh, we did get a lot of great ideas from the places that we visited. Uh, Mr. Reynolds was, was really uh, supportive and helpful in getting this off the ground, and, and Mr. Cusack did some visits as well, along with Ms. Swan, so, so thanks to all involved. Beth, how do you expect thanks. to distribute it? Are we gonna see it on a channel? Yes, most likely. We, we've already uh, come up with some uh, names for it and, and how, how, what we're going to call it. We have some, some, some ideas for the coffee mugs. You know, <laughs> we're ready. I can't reveal that yet, though. It's not a no. <laughs> top secret. <laughs> I was happy to see my, um, my high school on that, that list of high schools that you visited. Oh, that's cool. They have, uh, they, they've been reporting through uh, school closure. Uh, they, I guess they have a remote way to, to do it, but I've been mm -hmm. following them on Instagram. So that's really exciting to be able to have that in Huntington. That will be cool. It's the right. B-roll. The B-roll, it scares me. <laughs> I think our, our newest uh, trustee may be uh, excited about this course as well. All right. So we already have a motion in a second, I believe. Um, any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all for supporting all right. us. Thank you, Beth. That's great. Thank you. All right, Jim, now it's to you. Sorry, see that I was rushing through. We have not had uh, a collection of schedules like this on yeah. an for some time, so this um, probably a long time. We've had a lot on hold. So I am asking the board for approval of personnel items on schedules 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 19, and 22. All right, that is a long list for tonight. All right, we all have those. Um, let's get a motion to approve the personnel items. Motion from Tom. Motion from Tom in a second. Linda. Second from Linda. Do we have any comments or questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, very good. Jim, one, anything you wanted to say? Yeah, one, one quick announcement. Um, a, a lot of this is, like I said, uh, items that have been on hold, but the one point I'd like to draw the boards and, and community's attention to is there is a tenure appointment on this, on this, this uh, in this collection. Uh, Eric Reynolds was just appointed, uh, granted tenure. Uh, we will, there are a number of teachers who are also in the uh, mix for tenure over the summer, and we will honor them all. Um, God willing, at a, at a ceremony during the fall when we are back together. But uh, Eric was granted tenure this evening, and I'd like to thank him for his service to date. And we're looking forward to uh, many more uh, great conversations about the arts to come in the future. Congratulations to Eric. Congratulations. Eric. Congratulations. Congratulations, Eric. Okay, so that brings us to Dr. Acker. Yes. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve items I through N on this evening's business agenda. There they are. All right, can I get a motion to approve our business items? So. Michelle and a second from Linda. Was that yeah. you, Linda? Yeah. Okay, yeah. any comments or questions for Dr. Acker? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Very good. Okay, and I think we had some donations this I can particular actually time. Read them. I remembered my glasses. Yay! <laughs> I can actually read them. My okay, so <laughs> we must put them up there. Oh no, I got it on my phone. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank the Jefferson. Oh, I touched it and now it went away. Jefferson <laughs> <laughs> for a purple leaf plum tree that's donation. Right. Very generous, and Miss Meredith Russo for the donation of 400 face masks to Huntington High School. Wow. Thank very you very much. Those generous. are actually for the graduates. Oh, for the graduation? That Those are for the oh, graduates. Nice. So they'll, they'll get that uh, either on Saturday, if, uh, on Saturday if we have them or the next time, available time after that. Very good. That and was a nice Ms. donation. Ms. Russo works for the flower peddler. So she that comes from, from her place of her establishment. That was very nice of her. We appreciate those donations. All right, that brings us to our second public commentary. I don't know how many people hung in there with us, frankly. Huh? There's still a number of you out there. I'm surprised. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, I'm Jim is going to look for your hand. I got you, Kelly. Kelly Donovan? It, 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 it's delayed. Go ahead, you're on. Hey, Kel. Okay, so my name is Kelly Donovan, and we have a sixth grader at Wooden Hall and a third grader at Jefferson to state my affiliation. And I just wanted to sincerely and humbly thank everybody for electing me to the trustee seat. I'm beyond excited and energized to um, begin, but I am also super nervous about the huge shoes that Jenna has left me to fill. And um, when she and I had spoke about the possibility of me running uh, a few months ago, I guess it was, I, the first thing I had up my mouth was there's no way that I could replace you. And um, I will never be replacing you, but I hope to uh, utilize everything that I've learned from you um, from the time that I've known you, which was when my littlest started St. John's um, in the Jews program many years ago. And you were just such a source of comfort and information and kindness and support for all of us. Um, moms that were, you know, you're going to be such an asset to the board, Callie. I'm so glad that they're going to, you're going to have a chance to work with a tremendous team of people. I wish you the best. I think we really lost the connection now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> I could catch it all before, but now I'm not getting it. No, me in. too. Kelly, you froze. You froze on us, Kelly, but I get the picture and you know what? You're gonna do great for um <laughs> you have a faith in me that I can fulfill this role and that I don't take very lightly at all. And again, I'm humbled and I'm honored to be sitting in the seat today. And I only hope that, that I can make you proud and all the families in our wonderful town um, that have these also. And I don't take that lightly and I'm excited to get started. And to borrow Emily's words, which I really loved um I wrote down but I really hope to do the same as Jen and all <laughs> the courage of my convictions and um honor our school and our family. 
So thank you all. I'm really excited. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. I really do. And I, like I said, you're just going to be a great asset to the district. I have no doubt in my mind. Just going through again. Just a That's fine. Oops. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. So I guess that takes us to our final comments by board members. Does anybody have anything to close with? Peace out, Jim. Uh, <laughs> I'm sad, except you're not getting rid of me yet. I'll see you in executive session on the other side. <laughs> All right. If that's the case. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. I was just going to say in advance of graduation, since we won't be, you know, handing out diplomas to everybody, I just wanted to, you know, congratulate the class of 2020, and hopefully we will get to congratulate them in person sometime, but um, I think that the graduation is going to be memorable and awesome and... I think so, too. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. The production is, is complete. The screen will be put up on, on Friday, and then we're... We're ready to go Friday and Saturday. As I mentioned this morning, I have your tickets on the table. So mm -hmm. come in and get them. Yep. And the weather's looking great. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, now Nothing but beautiful X. days. Oh, X, don't you know? You can't. <laughs> <laughs> all and right, it's, folks. It's Any, anybody else? Are we all good? Is all right, then I'm going to look for a motion to go into gentleman no? by the name of Stan Becker that has been smiling through this entire meeting. I just want to acknowledge uh, Jen's dad. My dad. <laughs> my 86, almost 87 year old dad manages to get on Zoom and be a part of this meeting. He's a super ager. We should all just like this to be just like him when we're his age. Thanks dad. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> so that's cool, Jim. Thanks for pointing that out. That's neat. All right. Then in that case, I guess we really are going to motion to go into exec. So can I get a motion to go into executive session? Motion. A motion from Tom. And I think I saw a second from Christine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Thank you again, everybody. All my best to everyone. I'll see you guys at exact. Okay.